I really can't believe they did this. So this is a book. It's called Calculus and Analytic Geometry, and it was written by George B. Thomas. And look how thick this is. What a really cool book. So this book is actually still used today. It's extremely popular, and it has been updated and revised. And here I have a newer version of this book. This is the 13th edition, Early Transcendentals. And there's been some changes between the older edition and the newer edition. And I'm not saying the changes were bad. I actually think a lot of the changes were really good. And there are major improvements in this book versus this book. There's also some things that were lost. But I'm not really talking so much about the changes. I'm just really shocked about something else. And I guess it is a change. It's just one change specifically. It's not a content change. It's a change in format. So this book actually has answers to pretty much every exercise in the back of the book. Not all the exercises have answers, but almost every single problem has a solution in the back here of the book. So the newer version of this book does not have answers to all of the exercises. Instead, it has answers to the odd number problems. And it just seems like a really weird change to make if you're trying to improve a book. It doesn't make any sense, I think, to take out answers from the book. Anyways, I'm thinking of this from a self-study perspective. If you're a student who wants to learn calculus on your own, maybe you haven't had calculus yet and you want to learn some calculus, you can pick up an old edition of this book and you can learn on your own. At the same time, there's been a lot of major improvements to this book in some respect. So the newer edition does provide value in that regard. Let's go ahead and just take a look at both of these books really quick so you can see what's in them. Calculus and Analytic Geometry by George B. Thomas Jr., Department of Mathematics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that's MIT. Chapter one is on the rate of change of a function Two is on derivatives of algebraic functions. Three is applications and four is integration. Five is on applications of the definite integral. Six, transcendental functions. So all topics you would expect to see in a modern textbook that could be used to teach courses such as Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and Calculus 3. However, this book has some extra content. Polar coordinates, vectors, and parametric equations solid geometry and vectors, partial differentiation. Now we're into multivariable calculus. That would be calculus three, at least in the US. Multiple integrals, infinite series. That's usually covered in a calculus two class. And then here we have some extra stuff that you normally wouldn't see in a book like this, complex numbers and functions. It talks about you know, the number systems, the complex variable, derivatives, logarithms, the cauchy riemann equations. And then you have some differential equations, which that is a topic that you do see in a lot of calculus books. But the complex number stuff is not something that is typically taught in a Calc 1 or Calc 2 or a Calc 3 course. But apparently in this era, when this book was published, it was something that might have been discussed. So my copy is the third edition, fourth printing, March 1965. And the original copyright is from 51. So that tells you something. It tells you that this book has been around for a super long time. I mean, we are in 2022 now, and this book is still being used. It's been revised drastically from this edition to this one over here, and it's still actually teaching people calculus, which is pretty amazing. The book has really good examples, and it explains things very well. Here it goes through the process of integrating tangent to the fourth power, and it guides you through the whole process. Very nice. Then Thomas decides, hey, let's generalize what we just discussed. So it works for any even power of the tangent function and he gives you a way to integrate tangent to an even power. Pretty cool. The exercises in this book are very much in line with exercises in newer books, although some of them are a little bit more interesting. So it gives you tons of exercises so you can practice what you've learned on your own. And again, this older edition has answers to almost all of the problems, which make it an excellent book for self-study. My copy also smells incredibly good. Oh, amazing. Let's take a look at the newer edition, which has a really remarkable name. The name is Thomas Calculus. 
And that's really interesting because the original book was written by George B. Thomas. So it's like they preserved his name by adding it to the title of the book. I think that's really, really cool. That's a really nice way to kind of, you know, commemorate the author. And then here it indicates that it's based on the original work by George B. Thomas, and then it's been revised by these people here. And the revision is really dramatic. The contents are pretty much the same, except it's missing the content on complex numbers. The really big change is just in the way it's written and in the examples and the illustrations. You actually have color illustrations, which before we didn't really have that in the older version of Thomas Calculus. Here is that same example we saw in the original version of the work by George B. Thomas. Here it's explained a little bit differently. Uh, the wording is a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same idea. So it has been preserved pretty well. And lots of examples here. You'll notice what's missing is you don't see that reduction formula which we saw in the older edition. So that's been taken out. So little things like that. I think they've made the book perhaps a little bit easier to read in some sense because they've taken out certain elements that maybe they thought were not needed in the book and maybe they were taking away from the book. If an individual, let's say a student, is reading a book and they're understanding everything, and then they get to something they don't understand, it makes it challenging, and I think that sometimes people give up. So they basically made the book perhaps easier to read so that it is more appealing to more people. At the same time, they've lost content because of that, but they have more exercises in this book. The exercises in this book have been greatly changed from the exercises in the previous edition tons of exercises, and you have answers to the odd-numbered exercises in the newer edition. It's really a cool book. I think both of them are great. That's why I have both, and also I collect math books, so I just have a lot of math books. I think if you're trying to decide which one to buy, I say get both. I think there's value in both of these legendary texts, Calculus and Analytic Geometry. By the way, this book is also available in Spanish. This is my copy in Spanish of this book. Let me just open it up and show you what it's like. Calculo infinitesimal y geometría analítica. Traducción de inglés por... That's the person who translated it. And it was published in Spain. How cool. I just got to give it a whiff. Oh, wow. Look at this funky notation for the hyperbolic cosine and the hyperbolic sine. Really interesting. Here's another difference in notation. We have y equals the natural log of tgx, it says. That's the tangent of x. So whenever they write tgx, they mean tangent of x. Also, here you see sen. That's the sine function. Pretty much the same content, though, as the English edition that is written by the same author. So very, very nice. Really amazing that someone can take one of these books and translate it to another language. I just think that is such a huge feat and just an incredible, incredible thing to do. A classic book for anyone who is trying to learn calculus on their own or maybe taking a class on calculus. A great book for learning. Both of these are good. Again, the newer edition has answers to only the odd numbered problems and it doesn't have all of the content that the older edition has, but it has other improvements. So both are good. I like them both. I'll also try to leave links in the description of this video to various copies of this book. So if you're looking for an older edition, I'll try to find a couple copies of older editions. I don't know how expensive this book is. I'm pretty sure it's not super, super cheap, but I don't think it's ridiculously expensive, and that's because I think they published a lot of these, right? This book has been used for decades. The name of George B. Thomas lives on. It is eternal. Really amazing book. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, good luck and take care.